Janagir Raman, our senior vice president and portfolio manager, emerging market equity with Franklin Templeton, joins us now. Uh, Janagir, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it's the first time I'm interacting with you on this forum, so lovely to have you. Let's start with your market view. Morning, it's been uh, one of those years where uh, the fear, macros, commodity, everything was not in our favor, yet markets are on course to give a positive return. Why is that? I think one of the factors that helped the uh, Indian markets in uh, calendar 22 was the relative performance. Uh, on an absolute basis, what you told uh, in terms of our internal uh, macro numbers were not great. But on a relative basis, if you could compare India with some of the other uh, countries, whether it is emerging markets or developed markets, I think in many of the uh, economic parameters, our performance is much better in terms of, uh, in terms of growth, uh, in terms of the incremental inflation, um, in terms of uh, earnings growth on such factors. So, which is one of the reasons why um, the performance of India in calendar 22, despite reasonably modest internals only, was significantly better compared to other markets. Okay. Jangi, what do you think is in store for 2023? I'm, I'm trying to understand the mood point here. Let's say in 2021, it was fintech, tech, commodities, sectors which benefited because of low liquidity. Come 2022, the reverse happened. Growth took a backseat, value made a comeback, whether it is NTPC, Coal India or PSU banks. So what is in store for 2023? Because we know that, you know, market style changes. Now, at the, first of all, Nikunj, at the market level, uh, what happened in 2022 will have a bearing on uh, the 2023 uh, market returns. Uh, we had a very good year in 2022, but let us face the facts. In the near term, we are going to like we are likely to see a deceleration in economy in uh, fiscal 24 or calendar 23. The um, growth differential uh, between India and the other emerging markets is likely to come down narrow a bit. The third is the fact that our valuations are still uh, slightly above the long-term average levels. Calendar 22 was a year where most of the other markets, they saw normalization in valuation. Unfortunately, we escaped that, which helped, it, helped us in 22, but probably is going to act as a handicap in 23. So put together, I think the near term, you have to be a bit more cautious about the, uh, the market returns. In contrast is the fact that the medium term uh, outlook is distinctly positive. Uh, things like uh, the capex cycle recovery, the real estate recovery, the China plus one um, development as far as industrial outsourcing is concerned. All of these factors make the three-year outlook much more positive, but that is tempered by the fact that I think the next six to 12 months, we have to be a bit more careful or, or moderate about return expectations. Janki, uh, financials clearly seem to be the sector, but the problem is the divergence there, right? PSBs are doing one thing, some of the bigger banks are doing another, and some of the bigger private banks have been underperformers. Uh, will the underperformers match up with the PSB outperformance? I think so. I think uh, for calendar 23, the banking sector is uh, likely to have a reasonably good, strong performance. Uh, the more powerful factors like uh, credit growth or the asset quality, those are factors that are going to facilitate the sector's outperformance. Uh, of course, it will be dragged by things like rising cost of funds or even rising OPEX structure. But on the whole, uh, given the valuation levels are also attractive, I think banking is, is one sector which I expect to do reasonably well in uh, calendar 23. Since you mentioned about the PSBs and the private banks, um, see in round one, what happens is the DP undervalued uh, uh, stocks in the sector, especially the PSU banks, uh, they tend to get re-rated in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a quick time frame. That leads to some rapid returns. But I think in round two, you will also likely see uh, probably capital raising from some of these PSU banks, which put some kind of a dampener in terms of incremental returns. And uh, then the, the earnings growth starts to take over and influence the returns much more. So I expect a more um, uh, <clears throat> uh, 
consistent return uh, from the financial sector in 23, uh, not the skewed pattern that you saw in the last quarter of 22. But as a whole, I think this is one sector which I expect to do reasonably well in 23. Best way to play the capex revival scene. I mean, not to say that stocks have already not moved up within this, you know, big umbrella bunch. But according to you, 2023, uh, what within the capex large umbrella is going to work well? See, the evidence so far on capex revival is a bit mixed. While there is an expectation. Uh, an eager expectation amongst the investors that the capital cycle uh, revived. Uh, the evidence is positive on the short cycle order flow so far. Um, the long project, um, uh, the, the announcements, uh, while we have seen reasonably large announcement, announcements in areas like green energy and uh, decarbonization opportunities, we haven't exactly seen much uh, activity or investment on the ground. So I would say that so far the uh, trend is very positive for the short cycle uh, uh, players within the capex cycle. These are the companies that, uh, that, that produce and sell components like uh, mortars, bearings, things like that, the short cycle items. There the business will continue to uh, exhibit strength into calendar 23 also. This is a good sector to play. Uh, it's a bit pricey. So you have to pick and choose your own uh, areas of comfort in that. On the large big ticket project items, I think uh, the, the activity is yet to commence and, uh, and investing at this juncture may be a bit too early in the, in the capex cycle also. Junkie, what's the outlook when it comes to IT? Are you enhancing exposure here? See, it's a well debated question at this point of time. Um, and the debate got uh, even more uh, intense after Accenture results came out, I think about two, three days back. Um, from one perspective, I think reasonable amount of uncertainty and uh, doubt has already been built in. The, uh, the, the last one or two quarters returns in IT has been quite weak. So to some extent, that uncertainty has been built in. So from that perspective, yes, one can take a slightly more constructive view about IT. But the biggest argument against that is the fact that even now the uh, valuations in IT sector are meaningfully higher than the pre-COVID levels. Uh, because of the uh, very high re-rating in valuations that IT sector saw during the COVID time, I think the normalization is yet to happen. And I think that is what uh, is holding me back from adopting a bit more constructive view about IT, uh, despite the fact that, like I said, the six month return has been quite weak. So, uh, I think it's the it, it's, it's valuation that is holding me um, from taking a, from adopting a much more constructive approach. Right. So I just wanted to understand that uh, in light of where India stands at the current juncture, the fact that a lot of experts have been alluding to the fact that we're a bright star among some of the other emerging markets. Um, where do you believe is the next long-term tactical idea or that sector that can provide strong returns? Clearly, um, there are uh, one or two sectors that come to my mind uh, where I think um, the both the opportunity as well as our capability are good enough to uh, to to, uh, to deliver reasonably good op uh, good uh, returns for investors. Uh, one is electronic manufacturing. Uh, it's a globally large opportunity, and uh, it, it, it's, it's also a play in terms of uh, uh, labor cost arbitrage. While we had this advantage in terms of labor cost for a long time, there were some other um, the, the, uh, <clears throat> factors uh, where we were not up to the mark. I think those deficiencies have been uh, compensated or, or, or addressed now. So EMS is an opportunity where I expect... Uh, reasonable amount of traction. We have a few companies that are listed in this space already. Probably a few more will uh, come to the market over the next one or two years. Uh, most of these companies are in either the small or the mid-cap segment. But I do think that uh, these companies will scale up quite meaningfully over the next uh, three or four years. So this is one sector where I think the uh, next cycle is going to, uh, to, to uh, function quite well. 
the other sector is an internal sector not necessarily um, an export oriented sector uh, which is the real estate uh, i think the post covid the demand recovery continues to hold firm um, unsold inventory numbers have come down to a to a really low level uh, so which means that and and finally you are also seeing some uh, asset price appreciation that is happening across the country so i think the demand will continue here and uh, this is this is a sector again which can help the help immensely the overall uh, macro growth as well as corporate earnings so this is again one sector where i expect reasonably good performance from for the next two years or so okay so you're looking at electronic manufacturing as well as real estate as two pockets outside of banks as the opportunities for 2023 now sir having said that you're clearly riding on the domestic consumption story the domestic manufacturing story the china plus strategy um so that's at the back end would you also look at front end to enjoy all of that you know whether it is retail stocks so that people actually go out and buy those electronic items um you're talking about real estate what about nbfc and housing finance companies to just fund the financing whether it's for the consumer or the builder housing finance is a derived activity so if the real estate cycle is doing well you will see uh, a reasonable amount of uh, uh, demand for housing finance also but do keep in mind that this is an intensely competitive sector uh, banks play a large role here so the role of nbfc is progressively is becoming a bit more limited as far as uh, housing finance is concerned uh, but still the opportunity is large enough so clearly uh, next 2 to 3 years housing finance will offer good opportunities for nbfcs who are very clear about their strategy which pocket of the market to address and who have the uh, requisite skill set in order to 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 address the, those opportunities um, you mentioned about front end i think clearly uh, the discretionary demand which was a bit on the weaker side in uh, calendar 22 i think that one can expect a revival in uh, 23 um, one of the theses that floated around after covid was the fact that we were having a k shaped recovery and uh, the economically weaker sections of the society i think they saw some bit of damage uh, to their personal balance sheet and it took some time for uh, repairing that balance sheet i think that is what um, dampened the discretionary demand but i think there the the trend is changing the fact that uh, asset qualities uh, the numbers are looking very strong especially the high yield uh, credit segment that means that even the economically weaker sections of the society the balance sheet repair is almost near end that leads me to infer that perhaps the discretionary demand also from that segment will uh, start reviving so the front end activities which were a bit more um, uh, weaker uh, in uh, 22 i think you you can expect some revival in in 23 janki just to wrap it up with one final thought that i'm looking at the portfolios which you manage and you know since it's a declared portfolio we get access to where the subtraction what you added what you deleted as for the last uh, some total of the portfolios in which you manage i can see a pb fintech has moved in i can see there is a zomato and i can see that new tech is where you are taking bets is this more like a one of those small you know testing bets which you've taken or you convinced that two year out three year out there could be lot of volatility this year next year prices may swing 40 50% that's the nature of some of these startups but do you feel convinced about betting on some of them are you catching them young and see them grow yes nikun so at the time of ipo i don't think we had enough information to build a very comprehensive investment case about some of these businesses post ipo with each uh, passing quarter the available set of information is expanding so one can take a bit more considered more like comprehensive view so this is giving us some comfort with some of these uh, companies and uh, while some of them may be tactical i think there is now Uh, enough information to build a longer term case in some of the companies and especially the the names that you mentioned such a pleasure having you on the show today and uh, you should come more often here's wishing you a very happy new year and festival greetings from all of us thank you and uh, wish you all a happy new year 
Bye. Thank you.